Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Saint Joseph, Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us, San Roque, pray for us, San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us, San Pedro Calungson, pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, this third Sunday of Lent, we focus on the symbol of the waters of baptism. This water cleanses us. This water leads us to conversion of mind and heart. And so as we begin this celebration of the Mass, we will now have the rite of blessing and sprinkling of holy water so that we may be reminded of our dignity as Christian people and our mission as followers of Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water He has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May He help us by His grace to remain faithful to the Spirit we have received. Almighty, ever-living God, who willed that through water 
the fountain of life and the source of purification, even soul should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit and body and so approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, cleanse us of our sins, and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of His kingdom now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. 
O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not take the name of the Lord, your God, in vain. For the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother, that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs, and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves as well as the money changers seated there. He made the whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen, 
and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name. When they saw the signs he was doing, but Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, and uh, to all those who are also joining us, the thousands who are joining us through online this celebration of the Holy Eucharist. And uh, this morning, we have pilgrims. And we would like to greet them, the community of the Philippine National Police. We would like to welcome Police General De Bolsinas, Chief PNP. We would also like to greet Police Lieutenant General Guillermo Lorenzo Eliazar, Deputy Chief PNP for Administration. Police Lieutenant General Cesar Hawthorne Binag, Deputy Chief, PNP for Operation. Police Lieutenant General Joselito Vera Cruz, the Chief Directorial Staff. And uh, we would like also to welcome our brother priests from the Military Ordinariate of the Philippines concelebrating with us in this Mass, Father Jason Ortizo, Father Jim Serinia, Father Julius Cruz, and we would like to also welcome all the directorial staff and all officers who are here joining us in this celebration. We are very happy to welcome you here for joining us in the 500 years of Christianity celebrations. This Sunday, not only them, but all the police officers all around the country are joining in the celebration, commemoration of the 500 years of Christianity. We welcome you not as police officers today, but we welcome you as pilgrims in this church, in this cathedral, the first cathedral in the country, the mother church of our country. And today, my dear brothers and sisters, we focus on the symbol of water, the cleansing waters of baptism. Tubig na naglilinis sa ating mga kasalanan. Kaya po kanina, sa pagsisimula ng misa, ay ginawa po natin ang pagwiwisik ng banal na tubig sa ating lahat pinapaalala sa atin ang tubig ng binyag. And this water has the power to cleanse. It has the power to change us. The power for conversion. When we were baptized, we were changed from darkness into light. From children of this world to children of God. 
the power of the waters of baptism converts us and changes us. Ang tubig ng binyag ay may kapangyarihang baguhin tayo, linisin tayo. And this morning, our gospel passage tells us of Jesus cleansing the temple. Nilinis ni Jesus ang templo. But let us be reminded also, my dear brothers and sisters, that this is not just physical cleansing. But Jesus wants to cleanse their minds, convert their heart, so that He could have conversion of minds and hearts. Ang paglilinis po na ginawa ni Jesus ay hindi lamang paglilinis ng pisikal na templo, kundi ang nilinis niya, ang nais niyang linisin ay ang isip, puso ng bawat isa sa atin. And so today, we are reminded of this cleansing of the temple. Cleansing not only of the physical temple, but cleansing of our hearts and minds. If we would notice, my dear brothers and sisters, there is an interesting conversation between Jesus and the people in the temple. Mayroon silang pag-uusap at tinanong nila si Jesus. Sabi nila, What sign can you show us for doing this? Ano ang karapatan mo na linisin ang templo at paalisin kami dito? And Jesus said, Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And people were wondering, How can you raise this temple in three days? This is a big temple that took 46 years to construct. But Jesus would like to teach them about the temple of His body. Itinuturo pala sa kanila ni Jesus na ang templo ay hindi lamang yung mga bato, yung semento na ginamit sa pagpapatayo ng templo, hindi lamang yan ang templo. Ang sabi ni Jesus, ang templo ay ang aking katawan. Jesus puts a face to the temple. Binibigyan ni Jesus ng mukha ang templo. Akala ng mga Hudyo, akala ng mga tao noon, ang templo ay yun lamang building. Pero tinuturo ni Jesus ngayon sa atin, ang templo ay ang katawan ko, ang katawan ni Kristo. Kaya ang templo ay mayroong mukha. Ang mukha ng templo ay walang iba kundi ang mukha ng Diyos, ang mukha ni Jesus. Jesus is the body, the face of that temple. My dear brothers and sisters, faces are important. Do you miss seeing each other's faces? Namimiss nyo na ko bang makita ang mukha ng isa't isa? Siguro po dahil lagi tayong nakatakip ng mukha, baka namimiss nyo nang makita ang mukha ng isa't isa. Faces are important. And even if we are covered and we can only see the eyes, Remember that the one beside you has a face. Subukan nyo nga pong tingnan ang katabi ninyo. No? Nakikita nyo pa ba ang kanilang mukha? Gusto nyo ba ang mukha ng katabi ninyo? No? Minsan, no, may mukha pero kahit na ayaw mo ng mukha ng katabi mo, may mukha yan. No? Ibig sabihin, tao yan. No? May mukha, may identity. 
kahit ayaw mo ng mukha ng kapwa mo, yan ang mukha niya. No? May mukha, may identity. The face tells us that a person has a living presence. Kaya kahit nakatakip tayo ng mukha, huwag kakalimutan ang tao na yan, ang iyong kapwa ay may mukha. Minsan ko may dumating dito, nagsimba, at pagkatapos ng misa ay lumapit sa akin. Sabi niya, Father, tuwang-tuwa ako kasi sa online lang ako nag nagsisimba. Ngayon, nakita na kita ng personal. Sabi niya, ang gwapo mo pala sa personal. Napaisip tuloy ako, pangit ba ako sa TV? No? Kaya sabi niya, ang gwapo mo pala sa personal. No? Napaisip tuloy ako. No? Pero mga kapatid, sa tingin ko, sa panahon po ngayon, people miss seeing faces. And Jesus is teaching us that today. Remember the faces of everyone. We may be covered right now and we do not see each other's faces but Jesus teaches us today remember the temple has a face each one of us has a face and when we start to forget the faces of others when we try to erase the face of each other then we would still, we would begin to abuse one another if we forget that our brother, our sister has a face. Kaya yung mga tao sa templo, inabuso nila ang templo. Doon sila nagtitinda, doon sila nagpapalitan ng pera, ang gulo ng templo. Bakit? Nakalimutan nila may mukha ang templo. Walang iba kundi ang mukha ng Diyos. Kapag nalimutan natin ang templo ay naroon ng Diyos. Kapag nalimutan natin ang presensya ng Diyos sa templo, aabusuhin talaga natin ang templo. Ang turo ni Jesus ngayong araw, huwag kalimutan ang mukha ng templo ang mukha ng bawat isa. Kapag nakita natin ang ating kapwa ay may mukha, igagalang natin, irerespeto natin. That is why in our first reading today, from the book of Exodus, we heard about the Ten Commandments. And in the Ten Commandments, we also see that God puts faces in the law. Tinuruan tayo ng Diyos na ang batas ay may mukha. The first commandment, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of slavery. Parang sinasabi ng Diyos na ako ang inyong Diyos at mayroon akong mukha. Kilalanin niyo ako. And in the following commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, nor his belongings. God is reminding us that all of these laws are based when we recognize the face of one another. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, today let us be reminded of this. Let us not erase the face of each one, but instead recognize that every person has a face. And when you look at each other's face, you recognize I respect this person. He has a face. He has a living presence. The presence of God, the image of God imprinted on the face of this person. 
Huwag po nating buburahin ang mukha ng bawat isa. Dahil kapag sinimulan na nating burahin ang mukha ng bawat tao, ah, babaliwalain mo na yung tao na yan. Sisimulan mo nang abusuhin ang tao na yan kapag hindi mo na nakikita na siya ay may mukha. Na siya ay may mukha. Image of God. In the second reading today from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, St. Paul exhorts us that Jesus is not just a sign, Jesus is not just a wisdom, Jesus is a person. Si Jesus na ating Panginoon ay mayroong mukha. For our pilgrims uh, this morning, our dear officers from the PNP, since you are doing the pilgrimage here in the cathedral, let me point out to you a very interesting detail in the Manila Cathedral. The stained glass windows in the Manila Cathedral was painted by the Filipino artist Galo Ocampo. And he did a lot of designs in the stained glass windows here. But my favorite that teaches us today also, whenever you come inside the cathedral, are the circle windows surrounding us. Baka po nakikita niyo yung mga pabilog no, na uh, stained glass windows. So for our pilgrims, these windows represent the seven corporal works of mercy. So you will see here, giving clothes to the naked, giving drink to the thirsty, giving food to the hungry. Dito naman, makikita natin visiting the sick, visiting those in prison, burying the dead. Makikita po natin dito, pinapaalala sa atin na sa ating pananampalataya kay Kristo, napakahalaga ang paggawa ng mabuti sa kapwa. Dahil ang sabi ni Jesus, galing sa Biblia, sabi ni Jesus, whatever you did to the least of my brethren, you are doing it to me. Ano man ang gagawin mo sa kapwa mo, parang ginagawa mo na sa akin. Kaya kapag ikaw ay nagpainom ng nauuhaw, nagpakain ng nagugutom, bumisita sa mga may sakit, bumisita sa mga nasa piitan, tumulong sa pagpapalibing ng mga namatay, parang ginawa mo na rin yan. Parang tinulungan mo na rin si Jesus you will see that in the face of your neighbor, you will see the face of Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday, we were sprinkled with holy water. We were cleansed by the waters of baptism. But Jesus reminds us today, He does not only cleanse our physical body, but Jesus cleans our mind, our heart, our soul. Let us be reminded that the waters of baptism should change our mindset, change our heart, lead to conversion of our conscience, especially this season of Lent. Sana po mga kapatid ay sa linggong ito mapaalala sa atin na ang binyag ay nililinis tayo, binabago tayo. At ang nais ni Jesus ay hindi lamang pagbabago sa labas, kundi pagbabago ng kalooban, pagbabago ng isip at puso. At ang nais ni Jesus na pagbabago ngayong linggo na ito, makita natin 
ang mukha ng Diyos sa bawat isa. Kapag kayo ay natutokso na gumawa ng masama sa kapwa, tingnan ang mukha ng kapwa. Makikita mo, mayroon siyang presensya, mayroon siyang mukha, mayroon siyang mukha na nilikha ng Diyos. Siya ay mukha ng Diyos. Let us pray that in this Mass, Jesus may lead us to conversion of minds, conversion of heart, and lead us to see the face of God in one another. Amen. Please stand. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, the commandments of the Lord are clear, but His mercy is great. Let us now pray to our Father, trusting in His wisdom. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Hear our prayer. That the Catholic Church may guide his members in the paths of goodness and bring them closer to God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may learn to turn away from the sin with all our hearts, remaining obedient to God's law. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who do not believe may yet hear the word of God and be brought to eternal salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during this holy season, we may recognize the crucified Christ as the power and wisdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may enjoy eternal life through the crucified and risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us now pray for our personal intentions, for the intentions offered in this Mass, and for people who ask for our prayers. Almighty Father, in wisdom you have revealed your law. In mercy you give us grace to fulfill it. Hear the petitions of the people gathered in the name of your Son who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
Isten. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. As we face our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sacrament of His body and blood, let us be reminded that we are looking at Jesus, the face of God. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down Your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, 
we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters so full in sleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face, and have mercy on us all. We pray with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coerced to turn life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now call on God as our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to thank all those who have joined us physically in this Mass and all those who are continuing to join us through our online streaming of this Eucharistic celebration. Thank you for your continued support and help to the Manila Cathedral. And we would like to thank most especially our pilgrims this morning our brothers and sisters in the community of the Philippine National Police. Thank you for visiting the Manila Cathedral. Thank you for joining the celebration of the 500 years of Christianity. And we would like also to thank you for your selfless service as frontliners, especially in this time of pandemic. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Next week, we will be reflecting on our anointing with the oil of salvation as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, our symbol for the next Sunday as we continue to deepen our baptismal catechesis is the symbol of the holy oil that uh, was given to us during our baptism. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. So faith, grateful today, we bear the gift of mission, totally yours, we give ourselves, faithfully yours until the end, to your mission, Lord, we give our rest.